the Triple Arena Home Show. Um, we are uh, making a series of uh, conversation with our partners. And today I'm delighted to have a conversation with uh, Veronica Skrokfel from Architects Council of Europe. Hi, Veronica. Hi, Simona. Hi. So Veronica, uh, she has, uh, Veronica is an architect. Uh, she has a diploma in architecture and a master of uh, engineering in real estate economics and facility management. And she holds a PhD on social network analysis of knowledge transfer in sustainable office buildings projects in the UK and Germany. Um, over the last 15 years, she worked uh, in different sectors of the built environment from uh, small independent uh, companies to uh, global blue chip groups in Europe and in the US. Um, she has expertise in a broad range of sustainability issues um, and uh, she she's very much involved in various European funded projects from the FP7 to Horizon 2020 and Erasmus Plus for over six years now, uh, leading work packages, uh, especially on dissemination, exploitation, stakeholder involvement and um, policy paper uh, uh, development. So um, we read like you have been involved in, uh, you know, Horizon 2020 projects for many, many years. Um, how do you think this uh, project uh, differ from uh, other projects you have been working on in your professional career, like in Europe and also outside? Um, well, first of all, there are uh, the European projects. I think that just the fact that they are European makes them different. So that you have um, people from all over Europe working on one uh, subject. Um, you have the best brains, the, the most innovative ideas. You have a lot of SMEs um, basically working on cutting edge at, at research over a longer period of time. So it's like uh, three to even five years. Um, so that makes it different already so I've been involved in 17 or 18 projects uh, by now um, starting from from FP7 but yeah as you say also Erasmus Plus and Creative Europe and uh, of course Horizon 2020 and each um, funding framework um, of the European Union is also different in itself so with Erasmus Plus you are looking more at training and education for example and in Creative Europe we have a project that is more on the networking um, aspect and then, of course, in Horizon 2020, you have all the research and development as well. So, so each one of them is, is different itself. Yeah, yeah. And uh, talking about Triple Arena uh, specifically, uh, what does this project mean? Well, to you, of course, as a as a professional, and to uh, Architect Council of Europe as an organization, and for uh, the <coughs> artists that you are uh, representing and. Uh, what's, in your opinion, the, the added value of this specific project in the panorama of uh, um, research and innovation for architects? Uh, as uh, the Architect Council of Europe, um, we represent the interests of the architects, so that means that may, mainly we do policy work and lobby work towards the EU institutions. We are also involved in, in uh, as I said, a, a lot of <laughs> European projects, for a long time now, um, but we usually only join projects if they go along with our strategic goals and, and they support our policy positions and our lobby work. That's the that's the main goal that we have. And if they bring benefits to our members, so our members are the architectural associations in each member state, and their members are then all the European architects. So in the end, if this project can provide a benefit for, for uh, the European architects on the ground, then this is a reason why we why we usually join. So, for example, if a project uh, provides training, that's a very common thing that that we like to do. In Triple A Reno, uh, we really like the collaboration with everyone, especially to work together with the other European umbrella organizations. So, Housing Europe is, uh, for example, uh, important because we work a lot on housing issues in our special working group. Um, and ICLE, of course, because we also have a working group on urban issues that, that uh, relates very much to the work of ICLE. 
And then UAPI is the Union of Property Owners. They represent the clients of every architect. So working with them is also great. And then REVA, last but not least, uh, everybody knows about um, the tradition that architects and engineers <laughs> Uh, could have some problems. <laughs> uh, so it's really important that we work together with them as well. So that's that's one of the things that, that we really like in AAA Reno. And then, of course, it's um, the whole viewpoint of the occupant's perspective. The occupant, um, and uh, sometimes it's not the owner, but um, is, is, uh, is anyway the client of the architect. So to better understand uh, the occupant's point of view, um, is very uh, beneficial for, for the architects. Yeah, absolutely. And um, talking indeed about um, home renovation, but more in general right now, uh, what are your uh, opinions about the main barriers that are still there towards more, again, affordable, attractive and acceptable home renovation for um, the occupants for our uh, final users? I think uh, the main barrier is a financial barrier because uh, not everyone can afford a, afford a house or, or an apartment in the first place and so a lot of people buy uh, places that are not uh, yet renovated and then, then they cannot afford a renovation immediately uh, so, so uh, to have a step-by-step -by -step -step renovation is maybe an approach. Um, but uh, I think now, even with Corona, uh, it, the financial issue becomes more pressing than ever uh, with the uh, predicted uh, recession and everything. So mm -hmm. uh, I think it might be something that is even less affordable. Um, and I think another barrier um, is in the uh, construction workforce. So we first have, have a lack of actual construction workforce in Europe. So there are not enough people working on construction site. Um, that is because it's not very attractive. Uh, so we also work in some projects where we try to see how can we make the construction uh, jobs uh, more attractive. Um, but it's mainly related to it's very hard work to, to work on a construction site. Um, you have a lot of health risks and safety risks with, uh, with having um, accidents and injuries. So health and safety on construction site is the main issue. The weather, then, then how you're you might not be fit when you're 60, you know, and so on. So it's not very attractive for the for the youth to to start a job in construction, and that led to a lack in construction workforce in Europe, um, which everybody who tries to renovate knows because it takes ages to get somebody to come by and, and do something in your house. They're all full up, um, and then. Of course, a lack of the skills. So everybody who is working in construction uh, right now is uh, lacking a lot of skills to build to the nearly zero energy building standards. Um, so the the standards pr process, but the the skills uh, don't follow yeah. at the same time. Yeah, and especially what you mentioned right now uh, about the you know the Corona time, we we realize that. Before this moment, we were uh, discussing a lot about barriers, which are like, of course, financial, social, technical. But then you have all these sort of unknown variables that can sum up and somehow be, you know, not even predictable. But one of the things that we realize these days is that we are living in a, a digital world in which the digital divide is getting narrower and narrower and we're getting more used to uh, digital platforms uh, to, for communication, for uh, training, like personal training. Uh, how do you foresee a, a future also after the corona times in which uh, home renovations, maybe step-by-step -step home renovation can be foreseen, designed, planned uh, from people uh, sitting on their couch, like everything could be done uh, digitally right now? I think it depends on the kind of renovation that people like to do. So I can easily foresee that um, if you like to do one specific renovation. So let's say, for example, you want to renovate your roof and um, you're looking for a carpenter and you can send. Uh, so you go on the platform, you, you, you see somebody who has uh, good reviews, who is very qualified, who has uh, good skills, and then you give them the job. 
you can send them the plans of your roof and uh, and then they come and they do it well they make an offer and so so it's a bit more complicated than that but yeah so I think this might be possible I think when we speak about whole home renovations I don't don't really see this happening mm-hmm. because I think the the architect um, is still the one person to be approached like uh, if you if you are somebody who who owns a house or an apartment and you want to renovate it um, and you want to do so many things at the same time, the bathroom, the kitchen, the windows, uh, insulating the walls or insulating the cellar. Uh, you don't know, can I do photovoltaics on the roof or should I do a heat pump? You don't even know what a heat pump is. So you need somebody, a person of, of trust that explains this all to you, that makes the whole concept of the whole project, um, puts a price on it and then really keeps the price, keeps the quality and keeps the time. And I think this is something that only an architect can uh, guarantee because the architect has all the links to the construction workers. The architect knows, okay, he's available, he's not available. The architect makes the time plan and um, and also um, advises you on, on all these different things. And it has, of course, the benefit that um, he or she designs the renovation in a nice way. So it's not really um, just having an a engineered okay solution, but it's having really something that, that expresses your wishes in, in every design aspect. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, in a way we could, um, we could say that, uh, as we discussed several times, uh, architects remain the, the middleman and, and of course facilitate the process of also um, uh, people in their homes to get more acquainted about possibilities but then of course uh, there should be still like the uh, director of the orchestra that is there to uh, to maintain the, the control um, under the over the whole process which is indeed very time consuming but also needs to um, cluster a lot of different experiences. Um, so you mentioned that uh, you were working at Architect Council of Europe. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your role in Tripoli Reno and the contribution that you are making uh, to the to the project? So uh, yeah, we have many roles uh, actually in the project. The main role is that uh, we lead uh, all the communication dissemination activities in the project. So that means uh, we ensure that whatever all partners do and develop, if it's tools, if it's um, testing on the demonstration buildings or if it's developing the platform, that we tell the world about it. So uh, to make sure that uh, everybody knows what for free, what, what what has been developed with European money, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and not only uh, to everyone, but we we uh, identify uh, target groups. We we make uh, okay scientifically uh, or uh, more in the general public and so on. And we have different strategies on how to reach everyone. So this is our main role. Um, we also um, lead the so-called ro- roadshow that is now the home show. <laughs> Um, and this was um, partly also of the idea that there is too much European funding going into projects and then afterwards they're finished and nobody hears about it. So the idea was that we, we, we pack in all the results and, and everything and we travel through Europe and we tell, we tell Europe um, about it, what, what, what is there, what they can use. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we, have, we had also a very interesting uh, uh, role uh, in the ethnographic studies, we, we had this um, nine-month research on the quality of architecture. What is it? What is what does it contribute to the to the renovation project? What's the value of architecture, and how is it taught? So that was that was also really nice. Yeah, we've uh, we've learned so much uh, during this uh, two years because we are now uh, entering the third year of our. Uh, the three years of projects and indeed uh, we all have different hats and uh, we play different roles and that's also the the good aspect of having a multidisciplinary team in which we can exchange knowledge but also being present in different tasks and providing different inputs depending on what is asked in that moment. Um, what are 
the if you could summarize the the key lessons that you've learned from uh, Triple Arena so far. Um, so the, the first one is related to the value of architecture um, study that we undertook in the beginning. So I think one of the lessons that, that uh, we learned there was there is so much value to architecture, but it's not taught in Europe. So that was quite shocking to see that um, architects themselves are not aware of the value that they can bring. Um, so we hope we, we, can, we can change this and, and use our publications for that. Um, the second one was um, about the focus on the occupant, of course, like the behavior of the occupant, uh, the decision-making process of the occupant. So that we have this uh, board game in AAA, you know, and this was a really great experience. Um, and uh, to see that a simple board game can, can help occupants in their decision-making and to make them feel more comfortable and, and to empower them a little bit on making the right decisions right in terms of for themselves on what kind uh, of uh, renovation they would like to have. And the, the third one is, uh, I think, the, the multidisciplinary approach of the whole project and, and the European perspective. Yeah, I think we all have uh, so many lessons learned. It's also difficult to summarize them, to squeeze them uh, just in once. Uh, and we also have a lot of expectation from uh, from these projects. Uh, we set the bar very high. We know that what we're trying to do, like to really put the the engine of the renovation wave on again, um, it's it's hard. But uh, this is what we are trying to do, and uh, it's a it's, it's it's a challenge. But we are trying to uh, to be successful. Um, Veronica, I really want to thank you for this uh, this interview. But before letting you go, I would like to close with a message of hope. Uh, so what are the hopes that you have? Let's say if you could foresee the best case scenario for Triple Reno in the next years, what what do you think about? Well, I still have the hope that we will do some training for architects in Europe. That's uh, my main hope that uh, we will um, uh, go past the the Corona cri crisis and uh, we will see each other again in a in a training and make this all available to to architects on the ground. Yeah, we really hope that we could finally meet each other again soon. Um, Veronica, again, thank you for your time, for this interview. Thank you for letting me into your home uh, in this uh, Triple Arena home show. And um, yeah, be well. Thank you for having me.